A few months ago, I posted a video talking about how much I love my new CO2 tank and how much better it was than my uh, air compressor. And that video got a lot of comments. There were a lot of questions asking about the differences between a CO2 tank and an air tank or just a plain scuba tank, uh, as well as uh, a lot of comments with just inaccurate, wrong information. So I want to do a really quick video and just go over some of those questions and uh, respond to some of those inaccurate comments that other people posted to clear things up and uh, do a quick comparison of a CO2 tank versus just a regular air tank or scuba tank. Okay, so some quick comparisons between a CO2 tank and a air tank or scuba tank. The costs aren't too different. Obviously, if you have a scuba tank laying around the house or the garage, uh, it's gonna be cheaper than going out and buying anything new. But a new air tank or scuba tank is gonna cost you around $200. The first stage regulator that you would need to bring the pressures down is gonna be another one or $200. You're gonna need various adapters and things to make it work. You can probably find all those for about 20 bucks or so. And the refills on a scuba tank or an air tank are about $10 each, depending on the size of the tank. Now for a CO2 tank, the basic costs, if you do it yourself, are about the same as an air tank. If you buy a branded CO2 tank uh, or a, a pre-assembled package, it's gonna be a little bit more, but the basics at least are about the same. And the cost to refill a CO2 tank is about $20. Okay, now real quickly, uh, responding to some of the questions or statements that were posted on that video. One of the big ones was that CO2 will leak out of your tires. That you can't keep your tires filled with CO2 because it all uh, ooze out through the uh, rubber. Now, CO2 will diffuse through certain types of rubber faster than air will. If you have uh, bicycle tires, which are very thin and made sometimes of a different type of rubber than uh, Jeep tires or automobile tires, but generally if you fill up a bicycle tire with CO2, it's not gonna last very long. But because the Jeep tires are a little bit thicker rubber and I think a different type of rubber than bicycle tires, uh, it really isn't an issue. I've let my Jeep sit for three weeks, four weeks at a time, a few times, and I've seen no noticeable difference in the pressure. Now I've read online, some guy actually went out and did some tests. He did lose a couple of pounds of pressure over a few weeks. So CO2 apparently does seep out, uh, but it seems to be pretty slow. In the real world, I haven't seen it. So it's really not an issue if you're gonna let your Jeep sit uh, for a couple of months or over the winter time, then it's probably better to fill them up with air. But as far as uh, filling up, going home, letting your Jeep sit for one or two weeks, it really hasn't been an issue. Okay, uh, another comment that was posted a lot was that CO2 will eat the rubber away of your tires and make your rims rust. And uh, no, that's just wrong, it will not. If anybody has any information that says it's incorrect, please post a uh, link to your source in the comments down below. Another comment that was posted a lot of times was that CO2 will fluctuate uh, the pressure will fluctuate a lot with temperature and altitude. Now maybe technically there is some contraction and expansion with CO2, but in my real world use, where I've filled up using CO2 at elevations up to seven and 8,000 feet and temperatures as low as 30 degrees, uh, as well as filling up my tires with CO2 at over 200 feet below sea level when temperatures over 100 degrees, I've never seen any noticeable expansion or contraction in the tires. They didn't swell up, they didn't shrink down. So technically in a book, it might be true that CO2 ex expands or contracts a little bit, but in the real world use, I haven't seen it. Probably one of the biggest comments was that CO2 is poison and if you breathe it in, you'll die or if you get a leak in your, one of your hoses uh, while the tank is in the back of the Jeep, you will die. Uh, CO2 is not poison. Uh, those people were probably confusing it with carbon monoxide, which is very toxic. The only way CO2 could harm you would be if it were to, uh, if your tank were to leak completely and displace all of the air in your Jeep and then you would suffocate because it would push the air out and the only thing that would be left would be CO2. I don't know about your Jeep, but mine is just so drafty and full of leaks that I just don't think there's any way that could happen. So technically it is possible. I haven't read of that happening to uh, anybody with a CO2 tank. Another thing that was posted a lot was that uh, CO2 tanks or air tanks are bombs. Uh, and if you rear end somebody, 
with an air tank or a CO2 tank in the back of your Jeep, it's gonna explode and it's gonna be like Hiroshima all over and everybody's gonna die. And uh, that is not the, the case with a CO2 tank or an air tank. CO2 tanks or a regular scuba tank have uh, pressure relief valves so that if you leave it sitting in the sun or if it gets way too hot, uh, they will release and let all the gas out so it wouldn't explode. Even if you're gonna shoot it with a bullet, it's not gonna explode, it'll just get a little hole in it and all the uh, air or CO2 would leak out. Now one thing that would be a problem with either a CO2 tank or an air tank is that if you were to break the valve off, that valve, which is made of heavy duty metal, steel or aluminum, would be like a bullet. That's why all of the branded CO2 tanks come with a heavy duty valve guard so that if it falls over or whatever, it's got a very heavy duty aluminum guard that keeps that from breaking off. I haven't seen that on any scuba tanks. So if you're doing a do-it-yourself scuba tank setup, that's something to be aware of. One of the other comments was why not just fill your CO2 tank up with air? Because it does cost more to fill up a CO2 tank with CO2 than filling it up with air, so why not just fill it with air? Well, you can't really do that for a couple of reasons because the valving on a standard CO2 tank is different than the valving on a standard air tank. So if you were to take it to any legitimate place, they wouldn't even be able to plug it in. It just wouldn't work. The other thing is that the tanks are approved and stamped for only a certain type of gas. CO2 tank says only put CO2 in. Air tanks say only put air in. And again, any legitimate place wouldn't do it. The other issue is that in order for an air tank to be as effective as a CO2 tank, as far as the number of refills you can get, how much air you can fit in it, you'd have to put that air in at about 3,000 PSI. And a CO2 tank is rated only at 1,800 PSI. So if you were to fully fill up a CO2 tank, the same way that you would do a air tank, because of that extra pressure, you would blow the safety valves. Okay, so the really big question that everybody asked and that I didn't know the answer to was, will a scuba tank hold as much air or be able to refill as many tires as a CO2 tank? I wanted to find out the answer, so I put it to the test. So here's what I did. Using my 37 by 12 and a half Falcon Wild Peak tires, I aired them all down to about 12 pounds using my preset Ston deflators and then I aired all the tires back up to 30 PSI. I aired all the tires down and back up until I ran each tank completely dry. With my CO2 tank, I was able to refill 12 and just about three quarter tires. So that would equate to three different trips going out off-road, uh, filling up all four tires three different times. Scuba tank, I was able to fill up 12 tires and one half more, so 12 and a half tires. So basically they're pretty much the same as far as how many tires a CO2 tank can fill up versus a scuba tank. Now the one thing that I did notice is that the CO2 tank was a constant speed, a constant pressure when it was 100% full versus when it was down to 1%. It, it was just as fast all the way through until it pretty much died. The air tank, the lower it got, the slower it aired up the tires. It was much slower at, uh, when it was down to 25% and lower than it was when it was filled all the way up. Now it was still fast, way faster than say an air compressor, but it was noticeably slower the lower that it got. The other thing I noticed is that overall, the air tank was slower. That's probably because the first stage pressure regulator that's on the scuba tank is preset to about 125 pounds whereas the CO2 tank is at a couple of hundred pounds, two or three times higher. I don't know if you can get a higher pressure regulator for a scuba tank, because I think normally on scuba tanks you don't want the pressure that high. Okay, I hope that answers some of the questions, at least from the previous video. If you have new questions or if I did something wrong, please leave a comment below.